So what actually is macroeconomics? For those not familiar with any economics, it can seem incredibly confusing. And yet it is macroeconomics that dominates the news, whether it's in our newspapers, on the radio, or on the television. It is crucial that if you want to grasp anything in economics, you really should understand what macroeconomics is. If you were to ask the layperson what they think of in terms of a word association with economics and macroeconomics in particular, they may come up with things like inflation, money, trade, taxes, banks and unemployment. Indeed, these are all to do with macroeconomics. For those perhaps with a working knowledge of macroeconomic terms, a similar game may reveal words such as stimulus, monetary policy, economic growth, GDP, central banks and budget deficits. Indeed, all these words are associated with macroeconomics, but what ties them together is really the key question that we'll be answering in this video. Over the next few minutes, therefore, we're going to cover three key areas. Firstly, we're going to look at the fundamental economic divide between microeconomics and macroeconomics. That will help us understand what macroeconomics actually is, and we'll realise it's actually a fake divide. Secondly, we'll look at the economic players and actors. Who is it that we talk about when we talk about macroeconomics? If the economy is our stage, who are these players and actors and what is their story? Thirdly, we'll have a brief summary of what is macroeconomic policy and we'll cover what governments try to achieve and why. Before we get started though, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me and it will help other people find this video too if you think it's useful. Thank you. Any student of economics will be told, probably on their first day, that the discipline of economics is split in two. There is microeconomics and there is macroeconomics. But how do the two relate? And what does this tell us about macroeconomics? Well, to show this, let's first think about microeconomics. People are often much more comfortable talking about microeconomics. It's easier to understand and to relate to our own life experiences. After all, microeconomics is about how we as individuals make decisions. It's about how we buy things, what we do for work or employment. It's about firms and businesses, about how they set prices, how they make and produce things. It makes sense. It directly relates to the world around us. Macroeconomics, though, that's a different story. That can seem very confusing with little in common with our experience in our daily lives. The clue, though, is in the name. If micro is small, then macro is big. And actually, that's really what it's about. They are very closely related. If microeconomics is about one firm and producing, macroeconomics is about all firms in the economy and total economy-wide production. If microeconomics is about how we act as individual consumers, macroeconomics is about total consumer behaviour. If microeconomics is about individual choices we make about whether to be employed or not, then macroeconomics is about the labour market for the whole country. And that really is all that macroeconomics is. It is the aggregation of microeconomic decision making. In Act 2 of As You Like It, Shakespeare wrote, All the world's a stage, all the men and women merely players. Well, if our economy is the stage, then who are the players? Who are the stars? And who's playing a supporting role? Well, it turns out there are actually five roles and only two of them are true stars. And let's go through each of them in turn. It turns out the first starring role is you. It's me. It's all of us. After all, economics is a social science and it's about how we act as individual consumers and how we decide to supply our labour to firms. So individuals play a starring role and without them there would be no economic show. Economists often refer to these individuals as households, understanding that sometimes, in terms of how we consume and act, we operate as small family units, and they are the key first starring role. Our second starring role goes to firms and businesses. At its most fundamental level, economics is the study of how we, as human beings, satisfy our unlimited wants and desires. In doing this, firms and enterprises have a key role to provide the goods and the services that we so desperately need. 
It is the entrepreneurial activity of these firms that is key in our story, and in return for these goods and services, we provide them with our labour. Now we come to the supporting roles, and our first role goes to government. They tax and they spend, and their role in markets is fundamental in shaping the economic policy. Over the 20th century and up to date, they have grown massively and they take an increasingly large share of our national income. So supporting role one goes to governments. Supporting role two goes to foreign countries, or more specifically, to trade with them. Just think of your iPhone or your mobile phone and you'll get a sense of the amount of flows across international borders for goods and services and how things are produced all over the world and shipped to your local store so they are available. It is imports and exports that are key here in the balance of trade. So supporting role two goes to foreign countries and trade. Finally, we come to supporting role three, and this goes to banks and financial institutions. What we find is that money is absolutely key to the functioning of an economy. Money to an economy is like oil to an engine. It lubricates the whole system and makes it work smoothly and effectively. Fundamentally, banks take the savings we place with them and lend the money on to firms and businesses who want to invest. The interest they receive allows them to pay us interest on our savings and for them to make a profit. So, supporting role three goes to banks and financial institutions. So now we have our cast. We have households and individuals. We have firms and entrepreneurs. We have government. We have foreign trade and foreign countries. And finally, we have banks and financial institutions. But if the economy is our stage and these five players are actors, then what is the story about? Well, in that way, there is a whole host of things. And although there is no comprehensive list, I can give you a list that probably will contain much that you are familiar with. All of these items relate in some way or another to some or all of the five players above, and things that they will include would include inflation, exchange rates, technology, unemployment, taxes, bank lending, consumer spending, production, economic growth and resources, government spending, lending money, borrowing money, creating money, government budgets, jobs, and much more. The list could go on. These are the fundamental things that macroeconomists study. They study the five players and then they study the items that we've listed above. If there is one aspect of macroeconomics that we're all familiar with, it's the coverage that it gets on the TV, in the newspapers and on the radio. That's macroeconomic policy. What you notice when you follow macroeconomic policy is it's closely related and intrinsically linked with politics. Governments, elected by us, want to show us that they are in control of the economy. And the last thing they want to do is to upset us. That leads to demonstrations, and worst of all, for them, losing power. But there is a fundamental question here. Can governments actually control the economy? To what extent do the policies they adopt actually make a difference in the short term or even the long run? When things are going well, they will tell you they can run the economy and our collective economic success is definitely due to their macroeconomic policies. When things take a downturn, however, it's always a different story. So macroeconomic policy then, in the broadest sense, is set by politicians seeking to please their electorate and retain power. This means that they will prioritise the issues that are most important to us, the issues that are most likely to help them stay in office. There are many different issues, of course, but students starting their study of macroeconomic policy are usually told there are four key policy objectives. These are controlling inflation, improving economic growth, ensuring low unemployment, and finally, promoting foreign trade. And we'll take a brief look at all of these in turn. Policy objective one is controlling inflation. Inflation is when there are general price rises in the economy and people dislike this. Not only does it create uncertainty, but as prices rise, you can buy less with any given amount of money you've actually got. Your money actually becomes worth less. Policy objective two is improving economic growth. Over the past 200 years, the world economy has been transformed by an upswing 
in the growth rate of our economies and our productive capacity. And with growth comes more prosperity, which means longer, healthier lives for us all. Policy objective three is ensuring low unemployment. If there is one thing that makes people, or more importantly voters, unhappy, it's being without a job. Governments are therefore always keen to create good, well-paid employment. Finally, policy objective four is promoting foreign trade. Our standing in the world, and crucially how cheap or expensive it is for us to import from abroad the goods and services we want, depends upon how successful we are at trading with our neighbours both near and far. So we have our four main macroeconomic policy objectives, controlling inflation, improving economic growth, ensuring low unemployment, and promoting foreign trade. But when thinking about these, it's important to remember two final points. Firstly, it's crucial to remember that there are other objectives governments may wish to achieve. For example, over recent years, as concern over climate change has grown, governments are increasingly looking to decarbonise their economies. They may have other objectives too, like reducing income and regional inequalities. Secondly, many economists will argue that it is difficult, if not impossible, for politicians to achieve all of their macroeconomic policy objectives. That's because some of the objectives are actually in conflict with each other, and consequently politicians face difficult choices and trade-offs. For example, a well-known conflict is that reducing unemployment may lead to higher inflation, and vice versa. What this means is that, as Joseph Stiglitz, the Nobel Prize winning economist, has said, is that macroeconomics can never be devoid of politics. It involves fundamental trade-offs and affects different groups differently. So, let's summarise what we have learned over the past 10 minutes. But before we do that, a quick reminder, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me and it helps others find this video too. Uh, but that's not all. If you get any value from this video, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar, you can support me to make more of these videos as well as get access to extra features. But if you can't afford that right now, it's just enough to like, subscribe or share this video. Thanks. What we've seen over the past 10 minutes is that macroeconomics is built upon the foundations of microeconomic decisions. The individual decisions we all make about what to buy and when to work, when added together, comprise macroeconomics. Looking in total, we also see that macroeconomists like to analyse the economy by looking at the role and impact of five key players – households and individuals, firms and entrepreneurs, government, foreign trade and foreign countries, and banks and financial institutions. These together are our core cast of economic actors. Finally, governments seek to control the economy to further either their own interests or to please us so that we vote for them. In that regard, macroeconomic policy is usually focused on some or all of the following. Controlling inflation, enhancing economic growth, ensuring low unemployment, and promoting foreign trade. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks.